Hmm. A reboot of a beloved franchise that Warner Brothers owns, with an art style and tone that's at odds with its history. Yeah, in light of how well the recent Thundercats Roar video did, I've decided as a 100 yeah! subscriber special, I'm going to explore a show that's shockingly similar to Roar, at least in some senses. It was Lunatics Unleashed, a show released in 2005 to Kids WB, and it got a very polarized reaction, as the cast is basically a whole bunch of redesigned Looney Tunes-like characters, uh, Ace being Bugs Bunny, Danger Duck really just being Daffy Duck, Slam being the Tasmanian Devil, Tech is Wiley Coyote, and Lexi is pretty much Lola Bunny minus the small characterization that Space Jam gave her, which really isn't much. In truth, their designs really prove my statement back in the Sonic video. Silhouette isn't the be-all and end-all of character design, because that's really all the good things I have to say about them. Sure, they're all distinct and evoke the characters that the lunatics are modeled after, but that's it. They're all in similar black suits that only have one additional color to highlight their personality. In truth, these suits don't really add all that much insight into their characters. Give them some accessories, like some built-in gadgets for tech, maybe some sports gear for Rev, or incorporate some traditional hero colors for Race. Alright, so the designs are boring in mid-2000s edgy. Can the writing prop up the lackluster designs? Let's look at the first episode. Maybe it can give us some context to these strange heroes. Well, because spoiler alert, that didn't happen. The first episode ultimately leaves more questions than answers about the cast and world. Who were the lunatics before the asteroid? Were they people? Animals? Aliens? Instead, they just unfreeze an iceberg that arrived in Acme Metropolis because... Meteor radiation? What's more is that we don't get to breathe during the first episode. All we get is rapid character introductions with little time to really get to know them, beyond a few lines that let you know just what Looney Tunes character they're based off of. Only then to get thrust into the main conflict by female Zordon, who happens to be another expositor that also winds up raising even more questions than she answers. Speaking of explanations that raise yet more questions, upon melting the iceberg, it turns out that it was holding robo-vikings that came from another dimension. Why are they from another dimension? Because meteor, of course! The lack of any meaningful characterization hurts whatever humor they're attempting. What can you do with them aside from being watered-down versions of their original counterparts? They are about as interesting as try-hard code names like Ace, Tech, Slam, Rev, Lexi, and of course Danger Duck. We, we barely know these characters after the first episode. We don't know why any of them are superheroes or really anything about the futuristic setting that they're located in. This show really needed a hero origin episode. Oh wait, they have one! Six f***ing episodes in! What's more is that despite clarifying what the lunatics were doing, it really doesn't give us the more important details like why they became heroes, or more importantly, why are there Looney Tunes characters in a world that's 99.9% .9 human? Had they taken a more comedic tone in the first season, I wouldn't even bother asking these questions. But they don't. They want high stakes and dramatics. Plus, they went out of their way to explain things. It's just that they don't explain anything that's actually important that can actually get somebody interested in the setting. <sighs> While origin stories for superheroes are a dime a dozen nowadays, looking at you, Spidey, they still are important for establishing new characters, especially when you expect an audience to follow them for an entire season. Let's take a look at a show that Warner Bros. also produced five years prior, Static Shock. 
In Static Shock's first episode, we get a immediate res crime fighting scene. Static shows off his powers, busts a few criminals, however, we then flash back to his origin story. That gives us some clear answers to some of the inherent questions that superhero origin stories need to address. Those being, who are they? What is their inciting incident? And most importantly, why are they a hero in the first place? Throughout the first episode, we learn that his name is Virgil. He's a high schooler who has a loving family, Santa mother, has a crush on a girl named Frida, a best friend named Richie, and a potential villain in F-Stop. We already have a setup for who Virgil is and the world around him within the first seven minutes of the show. At this point in Lunatics Unleashed, we were already at the interdimensional Robo Vikings. For an even crazier comparison, in Thundercats Roar, we were already on Third Earth and had just met the Burbles, which I believe were actually in the second freaking episode of the OG show. So, t so that's some pacing for ya. Back on topic, Virgil winds up getting strong armed into a gang to help him get F Stop off his back. Of course, he gets called into a gang fight, which happens to be at a depot of mutagenic gases, one thing leads to another, and a whole bunch of people get mutant superpowers. This not only gives him an origin for his superpowers, but also for the villains. This only leaves the why, which is quite simple. He has loved ones, and already lost his mother to criminal activity. The lunatics are just playing cardboard in comparison to Virgil, and that was just the first episode. So from the standpoint of somebody who would, I don't know, view this for the first time, if the designs didn't turn you off, the lack of any reason or proper explanation of the show is a slam dunk into pure apathy. While season two did some course correction in making the tone more comedic and integrating some classic Looney Tunes characters, sadly, it didn't quite work out, as they also had a very irritating opening theme tune. Which only made things worse. In the end, it was a concept that might have actually worked had they executed it properly. Unfortunately, when you use characters that greatly resemble their predecessor, there is going to be baggage with that. In this case, the show should have been a more light-hearted lampoon of other superhero shows that were popular at the time. Unfortunately, I don't think it would work now because there happen to be a few shows that are lampoons of superheroes and they tend to clog the airwaves in incessant reruns. But in the end, it was just a show with a severe identity crisis that tried to cash in on two different audiences and ultimately got a audience that was far more niche at the time, furries. Well, that was Lunatics Unleashed, and it really has drained me. Maybe it's time for a show that actually manages to do action comedy right. If you like this video, make sure to like it, maybe leave a comment, and be sure to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications because my goodness, YouTube can be a bit crazy with this sort of stuff. Uh, of course, I'll be seeing you next time in a proper episode of Design Dungeon.